Hockey Scratch Red Wings Report, presented by 5v5hockey.com. Oh, boy. I don't even know where to start, guys, honestly. The Red Wings season has come to an end, and uh, I have a lot of thoughts. And the first one, I just got to say this. I'm not pissed. I'm not angry. There are ways that I, I understand that people are angry. The feeling that I can describe is I'm exhausted. This this season was an absolute roller coaster. The ups and downs, the extremes of them, unbelievable. It, and it happened tonight in a way that I, I was joking with people uh, about maybe this will happen with uh, the way that the wings got eliminated. Just, gut, I mean, gutting. It, it, it's the only word. I mean, I'd rather lose like eight nothing and just be done. But the way that this happened today, if you live under a rock, I think a lot of people that, that watch this channel are pretty in tune with what's going on. But the Red Wings won the game. And in stunning fashion, in a game where they, they didn't really, in my opinion, show up again. I mean, I was at the game yesterday, or uh, at home against the Canadians. And <laughs> down 4-1, they come storming back. They win the game in overtime. Awesome to be a part of that. The fans were nuts. I mean, hey. They come back, they win the game. They did the same thing today. Four seconds left. Four. And the Red Wings tie the game to keep their hopes alive for about 15 damn seconds. Because the Flyers, who needed to win in regulation, didn't know that they were mathematically eliminated because Detroit got a point. And they ended up pulling their goalie with like two and a half minutes left and got scored on by Washington, who now is in the playoffs with a minus 50 goal differential. Which is incredible, and I hope they get fucking caved in by the Rangers, which I think is what will happen. I think the Rangers are probably jumping for joy because they probably didn't want to play Detroit in the first round. I don't think I don't think any of us would have expected the Wings to like win a round, but like win a game or two, you know, be competitive. Let's do that. But at the end of the day, the Red Wings put themselves in this position. And they could have won all these games against the Coyotes and the Sabres and and just got a point somewhere along the line, or beat the Capitals last week. There was all these opportunities that were squandered, and I think at the end of the day, we're gonna look at this team, and, and we will. This is just a very emotional video I'm doing right now. I'm not cutting anything, I'm not really editing anything, because this is just how I'm feeling right now. I'm calmed down. I was, I was off my couch when Perron tied the game, and Absolutely gutted when I saw the score and how the, the Flyers lost. And uh, just seeing there was zero effort on the Flyers with like 30 seconds left to even like try to tie the game. So uh, FU Flyers and uh, FU Capitals. That's all I got to say uh, for now. I mean, like if I want to look at, actually, no, I do have more to say. You know what? There are issues that the team has and like they are, in, like they said, in the wild card, wild card hunt, they're a flawed team. And Steve Eiserman is going to have some work to do to trim the fat off this team because, and I've talked about this before, and I think a lot of you will agree, a lot of the veterans on the team have had moments where they are making rookie mistakes where it's just not acceptable. I'm not going to name names yet. Um, I want to kind of cool down first before I start pointing fingers. But there are a lot of reasons that the Red Wings are where they are. And there was a lot of bright spots in the season too. And, and there was a lot of those highs where like, you know, even just like trading for DeBrinket, signing Kane, you know, when he went into Chicago and got the overtime winner, you know, the, the two games against Montreal we just had, like there's been a lot of magic with this team and it just, they just fell short. Like they did what they had to do and won the game today. They won the game yesterday. But when you're not in, you know, control of your own destiny, this is what happens. And that's why you need to take care of business throughout the season and you can't go on these long seven game losing streaks but that's something where like the capitals the penguins the flyers all the, you know the even the islanders to an extent too went through you know these ups and downs where a team like the rangers were just dominant all year because that's what they are they're just a really really good team and that's where they should be this is where we should be for now this season wasn't a failure and i I'm gonna like call out 97-1 right now because I, for some reason all the hosts on that show just think that this is a failure because they didn't make the playoffs. And I know that's what we're gonna be hearing on the radio all week. It wasn't a failure. 
when they set out at the beginning of the year, the goal that was said by Steve Eiserman was we want to be in the conversation, you know, that we want to grow. Their point total went higher than they were last year. You know, they hit 40 wins for the first time since I think 2016. It was in the last time they, they made the playoffs. And uh, that shows that there is progress, but there's still work to be done. When I look at some of like the issues, like I said, like the veterans, some of them not pulling their weight. The core of the team, I, I really like what was going on there with, with Larkin and Raymond. Uh, you know, Cider at times had some moments this year, but young players still. In looking at like goaltending, like what are we going to do in net? Like we have Huso and Lyon next year. Like is there anything they can do? Because it was an issue at points this year with with line being awesome and then not so much and Reimer being who he is their stats are like pretty identical but like to get that timely save to get I mean Reimer played really well today even though he let up four but that might be an issue too but even that eight point gap like they kind of regress to the mean like that's kind of how the season goes and I think people will look at it this way that eight point cushion is what's going to piss a lot of people off and it and it does it does get me too because I go man you were right there and when we were living in the moment they should have grabbed it and they should have held on to it absolutely but <laughs> there are a flawed team and uh, you know they exceeded my expectations it absolutely sucks how it, it ended um, but you know you can call into question the coaching, I don't think there's going to be a change at all, but some people will want Lalonde's head. But I'm looking at the coaching staff as a whole with Lalonde, Tange, Bugner, you know, some of the offense, the defense strategies, the tactic changes when you're up by three and just letting people come into your zone. You know, the non-existent breakout, the non-existent neutral zone play, the dump and chase with no chase, the flip it out to nobody plays, you know, the, the power play all of a sudden sputtering. There's a lot of things where these guys need to like be culpable for it and like they need to make changes where it's almost like it's a little too simple, but I guess it should be simple because like our t the team isn't what we think it is yet. They're in this weird gray area right now, but I think you should be able to question coaching. If you're questioning Steve Eiserman, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like they, they've been getting better every single year. They're building. Some of their young guys are coming up. What I will say is if you're a person like me that wants the kids, they, you know, you want Edvinson, Casper, you know, you want Danielson, Sandine Pelica, and, uh, you know, Carter Mazur and all these guys to come up, there's going to be learning curves. There is going to be a regression. Because you look at Simon Edvinson, he had some plays in the last few games where it was like, oh boy, like that the fourth goal, obviously, yesterday or, or against the Montreal in Detroit, you know, obviously a bad bounce, but not a great play by a rookie, you know, defenseman. So they're going to have their moments where they're they're going to have the ups, they're going to have the downs. I'd rather them be making the mistakes than a veteran, you know, that's 35 years old that should know better. But Eiserman does have a lot of work to do. He has to trim the fat for sure. Um, but yeah, flawed team with some inconsistencies. And that's going to have to be something that's addressed in the off season. What we are going to do is there's gonna be a few more videos that we're gonna do in depth about well what were the problems that the team had more in depth than what I just did and how are we gonna fix it and then we're gonna do an armchair GM and what I would do if I was Steve Eiserman who would be coming back who would we let go what are some of the players that we could target like what would make this team get to the next level because I truly believe next year's playoffs it, that has to be the goal you were right there this year had more wins than Washington and the Islanders, and they're in the playoffs and we're not. But that's how I feel about the season right now, and I am calmed down. I think a lot of people are gonna they think I was gonna come in yelling and screaming. I can't do it. <laughs> the ups and downs of the season have just been so insane that uh, I'm trying to think rationally about it. I I encourage you to, uh, to to air it out in the comment section. Like if there's something you wanna just go in on somebody about, go for it. I'm. I'm all for uh, having the conversations about maybe players and coaches and stuff like that. But uh, how do you guys feel right now? You know, do you, do you think uh, that they should be in? Do you think it's kind of BS the way that uh, the Red Wings just got knocked out of the playoffs from eighth straight year? I was really looking forward to going to a game, even though the NFL draft is in Detroit and it was going to be bananas downtown. I really wanted to go to at least one and just, you know, go to LCA first time for a, a 
for a playoff game would be so much fun. I think it would be electric because the crowd's been electric all year. So that's all for me right now, guys. We're gonna go through, I'm gonna probably take a week or two and just really think about what maybe the wings can do and try and cook something up for you. If you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comment section. But until next time, if you enjoyed today's video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more Red Wings content. Let's go Wings, into the off season we go, unfortunately. I'll see you in the next one.